Whew, we talked about the five pillars needed for change or needed to determine if change is possible. I don't want to go on record. Everyone is saying every narcissist can be treated. Every narcissist can be healed. Every narcissist is receptive to change. They're not. But if we do the five pillars, we can determine their readiness to change. So recognition, responsibility, are you, are you clear? But this is emotional abuse. This is a chronic and pervasive pattern of behaving. This isn't just a little depression or a little bit of bad behavior, okay? I mean, unless it is that, but if it's narcissism, if these are patterns of thinking and patterns of behaving and uh, emotional immaturity and patterns of self-protection, okay. And then we talked about intervention, the importance of a moment in time where they are confronted and, and told, here's what must change. These are the things that must change. And you are clear within yourself. What are the things that must change? You've done some work with, with a therapist and you're clear about what must change. And then you give your mate an intervention letter and you disrupt their lives and they don't like it. They resist change and you have plenty of support so that you can face that. And then we talked about treatment, issue specific treatment and the importance of that so that he can learn victim empathy, taking full responsibility. What does a healthy apology look like? How do I eliminate, how does he eliminate defensiveness and arrogance and attitudes of superiority? How does he eliminate those? And then how does he develop a healthy interpersonal lifestyle and grow up? All right, now accountability. Nearly every couple that I talk to lacks any kind of accountability in their life. Going, a man going to a Bible study is not accountability, as good as it is. And a man having a support group is wonderful, but it's not accountability. Accountability is being held accountable that there are consequences if he doesn't follow through on participating in our core men's group, if he doesn't participate in doing individual counseling with me or someone on our team or some other therapist in your community that knows about emotional abuse. Accountability has consequences to it. So a failed agreement leads to a consequence and a second failed agreement leads to a greater consequence, and so on and so on and so on, stair-stepped. It's not tolerated. It's not enabled. It's not okay. So you, if you are a victim of emotional abuse, you do not over-function. You do not over-function. It's not your job to make sure he does this or make sure he does that. If you're doing that, if you're exhausted and you're expending that kind of an energy, that kind of energy, you're out of position. Your job is to recognize, pillar number one, intervene, pillar number two, insist on treatment, pillar number three, and then hold him accountable, pillar number four. And if he is not willing to be held accountable, then of course he is not safe to be in relationship with. And you need to face that reality. So my question to both of you, the victim and the perpetrator, are both now willing to work with a trained professional? Are you both willing to have a set of standards and guidelines to which you will be held accountable? And will there be real consequences? What do we have to bargain with? our self, our personhood, and you're worth so very, very much. All right. Recognition, responsibility, intervention, issue-specific treatment with a professional. All of this will reveal now each step of the way. You will know more and more and more about is he treatable and then accountability. All right. Push subscribe, and we've got one more video in this, in this video series. All right, look forward to hearing how this works for you. God bless.